Hi and welcome to the Geek Legion of Doom. This is an action movie review and I'll be looking at the movie Aftershock. So this film focuses on six friends who are travelling to Chile or travelling around Chile going to various different social hotspots and enjoying sort of local culture and they finally go to this uh, one sort of famous underground club where apparently it's like the best place to go. You've got the sort of three girls, three guys and whilst they're there there's a massive earthquake and the, the sort of the whole of this sort of area is kind of collapsing and everyone's kind of getting squashed in these you know massive cave-ins and such. These set of six characters basically fight to try and sort of escape this sort of area with their lives basically. Not only is there a an earthquake but there's soon to be the tsunami warnings as well so they, they've kind of got to get out of the way of this impending doom. Now I do want to talk about some spoilers in this review because I don't there's, a, there's some issues with it I have and I have to talk about the spoilers to, to sort of really discuss it. So if you've not seen it, I suggest you look away now. So anyway. So this is this this film stars Eli Roth as, as really the only sort of name you're gonna recognise here. I don't think he's a very good actor, let's just say it. He isn't a very good actor. Um he's not a bad filmmaker, but acting isn't his forte, I would suggest. Maybe you just stay behind the camera for the most part. He's okay, these kind of small cameos that you see in like Tarantino's films and stuff like that. But as a kind of a, a, of a main character, no, I don't think so. Every, everyone else in, the, in this film is, is not American or English. They're all either from Chile or they're from Russia. But they all, for the most part, they speak in, in English. Although there are a few sequences where they're speaking in their sort of native tongues and their subtitles. So what's it like as a disaster film? I suppose one criticism you'll have here is that nothing really happens in this film until about 30 minutes in. And you could sort of say it's, it's kind of character building, but it tends to, it does tend to drag a little bit. And it's just, it's just 30 minutes of these people hanging out. So it, it's not really much character building, to be honest with you, but you're not really told a lot about their past. You're told a couple of them have got, kind of got kids, but that's pretty much all you really know. It's obviously quite a low budget film, so some of the effects are going to be a little bit on the sort of cheap side I and mean, kind of does sort of show through. Um, I think they do a reasonable job for the money they have, they have to be fair, but it isn't, a, it isn't, it's not a large scale destruction here. And a lot of it, I think, does look like it's done on a set on the sound stage. On a plus point, this film does kind of play against your expectations about, you know, who who's going to live and who may, who may die and people who you may assume are going to sort of survive until the end may not. I know that's giving a little bit away there, but um, you know, I thought that was quite good. However, I guess one of the main issues I have here, a little bit of a nitpick, but um, about sort of two thirds of the way through this film, they kind of come across this sort of ruined fire engine. And two of the characters manage to save what they assume obviously is a fireman in this fire truck. And he kind of helps them from that point on, and they're kind of running away from this sort of group of of criminals, we sort of told those that the kind of the prisons sort of broken down and all these sort of prisoners are sort of running rampant basically. And that that is one thing that annoyed me initially is just that these pri prisoners are basically acting like wild animals. Fair enough, they're going to be prisoners, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be acting like wild animals. Anyway, so this fireman's kind of helping them through, you know, through running away from these sort of criminals and trying to help them sort of negate this sort of this sort of landscape. And right at the end of the film, one of these girls kind of falls down this ditch and he, he's trying to help him and he's sort of trying to sort of make her more comfortable and he takes off his kind of fireman's jacket to reveal all these prison tattoos. And then she kind of clicks that he's actually a prisoner as well. He just inexplicably decides to kill her and then and then attempt to kill the remaining survivors. But that, that just didn't sit right for me as well. I, mean, I didn't understand the why would the guy's motivations just suddenly chains like that. They're all kind of helping each other. If he was some kind of psychopath, he would have probably been attacking them from the get-go. Why, why sort of go along with them and trying to help them for that sort of amount of time, only to discover that that once once he's found that he's he was a, he's a prisoner, that they're all automatically going to you know I don't know turn against him. That really didn't sit well for me to be honest with you. He just seems I didn't buy his motivations for suddenly sort of turning into this killer. Um, I thought it would, would have been better if they maybe found that he was a prisoner, but he actually is still going to try and help them and he's still, you know, he may be a good guy, despite the fact that he's obviously a prisoner. 
But it turns out, no, as soon as she find, they find out he's a prisoner, he just turns into kind of bad guy mode and decides to start killing everyone. And it, did, it just was, I think it was such a stupid turn of events. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, so it's basically sort of saying that anyone who is in a prisoner is going to be a killer and no one can have this sort of, this change, no one can kind of have this sort of opportunity to sort of, even though they're in prison, they, they're, they're going to be a bad person. That's ultimately what it's saying. I don't, yeah, I kind of, I understand what I'm saying here, but there are, there are cases obviously where prisoners are going to be come out of prison and they'll be rehabilitated. And just because someone may be in prison for one thing doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a killer. The film wasn't perfect to begin with, to, have, to, to be quite honest. So that along with it kind of really sort of made me dislike this film a little bit. So I'm going to give this film a 5 out of 10. It's okay for a forgettable disaster film, but nothing nothing you're going to want to watch again or remember it in kind of a day or two. So 5 out of 10 for me. What did you think about that sort of prisoner issue? If you have seen it, leave me a comment. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. See you next time.